And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today for another edition of the FanGuard. Uh, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you are enjoying this content. Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another edition of the FanGuard. My name is Mark, and I'm Art Santa Clara from 1997 to 2001. And I'm John. I'm Art in Santa Clara from 1979 through 1981. And we'd like to welcome you, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have an awesome show to review and an amazing panel. So without any further ado, we are going to go around the room and meet these amazing people. Hey, I'm Nick Rodriguez. I marched Vanguard Cadets 1998. And then continued in the A Corps from '99 through 2003. So this would be my age out year here. Oh, Happy years. Next, uh, Mr. Shulman, sir. Thank you so much for being here. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm Stuart Shulman. Uh, March Vanguard 2001 through 2005. Uh, March Tuba Contra, my first year in 01. Mark's last year. And uh, then it was uh, the drum major two through five. I think that ties the record for most years as a drum major. I don't know yeah, anybody who's done more. Yeah. You, well, you and Rick South and Zap also all had four years in the uniform. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's a Congrats. lot of years. That's a lot, yeah. <laughs> a lot of years. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, now yeah. let's go down to, oh, my favorite Long Beach neighbor. Hi, hi. Uh, Emily Mavridis Contreras here. Uh, I marched in SEV uh, Cadet Corps in 1996. Uh, and then I was lucky enough to watch, uh, to march the A Corps in 97 through 03. This was my age out as well. Wow. Um, and during that last <clears throat> portion of, I had the also <laughs> the opportunity to start teaching cadet corps while I was marching. So pre-season, I would be teaching cadet corps starting at about 01, 02 land and did that for a few more years after age out supporting uh, during Diane's dynasty of teaching the cadet corps and, and all that good stuff. Wow. Great. They're not worthy. Exactly. They're not worthy. They're not worthy. <laughs> I'm gonna like uh, zoom in on your on your patches in the uh, in the in the background there as you're talking. <laughs> Quilt back there. My age out's in the pocket. I never, <laughs> I, never I never I never sewed on oh, my age out. We can't. You know, it just looks like it's running right <laughs> off of the sleeve, like that it should. <laughs> so. Well, thank you for being here, Emily. And last but certainly not least, we are so honored to be graced with the presence of Mr. Key Poulon. Thank you, sir, for being being here. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Old friend, man. Yeah, my name's uh, Key Polan, and let's see, I have to be careful how I say, say this, but I, I was a rook out in the Blue Devils in 1983, and then I joined the Vanguard team in 2003, so the show that we're going to see is my rookie year, so to speak, and uh, I was the, the brass arranger from 2003 through 2011. Um, also, I uh, arranged for the Cadet Corps in 2005, and then I, I worked with them from 2009 all the way up through 2017. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Key. A few years in there. A few years. Just a couple years. No big deal. <laughs> oh, man. And I, you know, I think I've been pronouncing your last name wrong my entire life. So, say so it is everybody time. else. Say it one more time for Poland. all of our listeners. <laughs> yeah. Key Poland. Mm -hmm. Poland. I got mm -hmm. it. I got it. Key Poland. Yep. Well, sir. Everybody tries to make it French, but, you know. It's one of those well, things. I think somebody <laughs> said it wrong. Somebody very important said it wrong once, and we all just went, yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> all, all my life, it's okay. I probably still will anyway, just for the hell of it. So. You know what? <laughs> this show, we're going to put an end. Uh, Poland. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have, you've probably, if you haven't surmised by now, we are going to be reviewing 2003 Santa Clara Vanguard. This is the Pathways show, and it is an amazing show. And let's hear from uh, our guests today about what kind of music we're going to be hearing today and what we're going to be looking for in today's show. Okay, well, I'll start with that. Um, yeah. First of all, when we, we showed up at the first design meeting, we really didn't have a program coordinator that year, so we all kind of jumped in and put things together. Um, I threw out the, the name Labyrinth. 
and everybody thought that that would be a great concept to put together. And so we were running with that and then it just kind of evolved into becoming pathways because we felt that we, uh, it gave us a, a broader brush to, to paint a picture with. And so um, the Labyrinth Show became Pathways. We uh, used three pieces of music. Uh, we opened with Wojciech Kilar's Orawa. Second production is by composer Jeff Beal. He's a film composer and we did one man show from the, uh, from the soundtrack to Pollock. The third um, production was Richard, Dan Richard Daniel Poor's Anima Mundi. And then the closer, we did the second half of Orawa. Nice. Kind of three pieces into four parts. Nice, nice. Stuart, as drum major, what was your favorite part to conduct in this show? I mean, there were so many parts that were terrifying, um, along, at, <laughs> yeah. along with exciting. <laughs> Um, so the terrifying parts were exciting, and then the exciting parts were exciting as well. I mean, you can't go wrong with the percussion feature in the third movement. Just the sheer power and energy that was going on there between the, the color guard, between the percussion, between the winds coming back in at the end. I mean, it was just a complete madhouse by the end of it. That's a great spot. Emily, what was the most challenging spot in this show for you to perform? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a really good question. Uh, yes, the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> that says a lot because so, you've done a uh, lot of drill. <laughs> there's done a, a lot there's of work. Lot. There was there was a there's a lot to be had, right? So um, this was you know we were talking about this before, but this was essentially a rookout for me with a brand new staff. Up until that point, I had, I had worked very exclusively with Mark Metzger and Carol. Um, and then we transitioned into Rob Jet years, very similar as far as very lyrical moments and what have you. Um, and then taking this it, complete departure, um, going into 03 with Adam Sage and, you know, bringing this gorgeous palette of movement, but ideas. Um, if you notice going into um, one of the songs, you have an arced pole. Um, no, that was not from slamming on the ground multiple times because we, you know, we go through that in guard two where we have to rebend our poles. Uh, it wasn't that at all. It was, we had an arch pole for one of the things. We had an S curve, a lot of uh, concussion y type of moments there with the trying to toss S curve poles and what have you, right? Depending on uh, wind and. <laughs> I mean, it's a challenge enough we to throw a straight pole, right? Let alone put an S curve. Yeah. Point. So yeah. there was there was a departure as well for Myron in the way that he staged the guard in different pieces, um, especially, uh, and I can say, I truly, you know, the weapons oftentimes are saying, we'll go from zero to zero or, you know, what have you, and we'll, but we'll be staying on the front half of that field for the most part. Um, and that was truly, um, I hadn't seen the back sideline in a, in a number of years, but <laughs> we had the rifle line shuffling from front, you know, to the very, very back to pushing back. To, so, so especially by used to doing a lot more of this was, and now uh, you're doing a lot more, th doing a lot more of this. And that, there was, yeah, there was just a lot of dance. There was just, just all over. Yeah. So it was so that, I, I'd say, yeah, well, it was, it was, it was, uh, uh, it was, it was something pathways. that. It was Pathways. Come Inhaler on. and all. It was. It was. So I, I have three moments that really come out. And, and I think we're going to see this when we watch the video. But again, half the horn line split on each end zone. And we can go into the difficulties later on of how to put that together and, and how that was crazy. The end of uh, Anima Mundi with the percussion feature and you know the, the brass coming in and ripping, ripping that whole ending, that was another big moment. And then the very end of the show from the seven, eight out to, uh, to, the, to the very end, just how it just built and built all the way up until we, we delivered that final moment. The very beginning to the first impact, I mean, Anyone that marched 2003 knows that chunk of drill and music was a hike to get to and very difficult to do. Um, so, you know, starting at 200 beats per minute, that's fast. And then starting with a pretty large step size, you had to be ready to jump on this treadmill that was already going. That's how I had to look at the show is like, when you could jump on this treadmill, you better be re ready to run at that speed or you're going to fall the relentlessness of the of the first opening movement is just insane insane and memorable 
Are you guys ready to watch this thing? I am so yeah, excited. Let's do it. Let's do it. On the field from Santa Clara, California, to perform their 2003 program. Here we are, a hundred yards apart. Ladies oh my and gentlemen, gosh, please you guys. welcome. The that came from the brain of Myron Rosander. <laughs> and first time and only time ever done. <laughs> right. We spent half of our summer on the opening 30 seconds. Uh, there he is. Out to 10. Oh, nice one. Oh. Nice one. Hey Ooh, I can feel it. I can feel it, too. Yep. All right, let's do a... I know exactly how that feels. Before and after. <laughs> I've been growing my beard ever since. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, staggered step offs. Yeah. And the drum lines even split too. Yeah. People the first time we did this in the in the uh, they call those the domes. Remember the dome? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh Alma Dome. I always like to bring up base five. He's base five, approaching, right? approaching the 50 right now. <laughs> yeah. Out on his own. That that was one of those fun things to watch. I like this. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful to watch. It's mesmerizing. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, and to speak to the guard, I mean, the palettes that Adam and team created were gorgeous that year, especially a departure from all the black of previous years, right? Oh, I love the uniforms that year. Yeah. I'm actually wearing a shirt for the kind of match. <laughs> There's so much to look at. And, and I love all the random people taking their own paths throughout yeah. the whole show. <laughs> so bite someone out of everything. Base 5 just entered playing about five seconds before this. So all that development before you even hit the Okay, so this is the chunk right here. So the beginning to yeah. here. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The so step out. Woo! Get a guard. Let's step out, elevated that okay, reset. moment. Do it again. <laughs> Five times. The pit just had so many notes the entire show. The whole the shot of Alan Christian right here. Yep. Hey, was there any electronics on this show? No. Just wondering. This was all. No, this is pretty. 04 was the first year. Yeah. Hey. Was the hey. First year. hey. There's Emily. Gosh, and this, the weapons are split so far right now. It's crazy. The color guard is, yeah, they're just all over the place. So there's so many different elements that are always being presented. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the quality of the book that um, that Rick had created for the weapons, especially, was just very different between even just rifle to saber. There's a and the product very, that was created a very clear pathway by the guard and also by some of the melophones playing their uh, their rips in there. I wonder what this drill would have looked like on the Ultimate Drill Book, like watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, this is back in the I day where we we line. had dot cards. We just <laughs> got coordinates and, and said this go was, here. This drill was like probably one of Myron's like last like handwritten like we got the drill charts when it, it was, was his last one, right? It photocopied, yeah. and we all went on the sideline and we wrote down our dots, and that's a lot of people interpreting point two five, point five, a lot of that. Kind of yeah, thing. yeah, we literally got the pictures and had to figure out what our dot was. Let me. I mean, I do. All right, here it comes again, you guys. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah, here it is. And this is a recap of that opening. That's great. Step out on the other side. That drum line's so good. Just yeah. sick. Oh, <laughs> <The> round tree. <laughs> oh. There's Dan McLaughlin. And then for something completely different, yet right? it totally functions yeah. within the yeah. palette. So this was fun to put together because. Um, we were trying to figure out some way that we could create new colors and all that. So we had um, the, this front 16 um, brass, um, I guess there's yeah 16 across mm -hmm. playing on mutes. Uh, so even mellophones, baritones with mutes. And uh, it was really fun to kind of, this little pointillistic playing going through just to create color. 
It was a lot of fun. Yeah, flags, man. We've got a fun story about those mutes that we do. Afterwards. Yes. <laughs> Houston. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> the drill reminds me a little bit of Dance Panels, 1998. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so much fun to watch, watch these shows because it's just a different era of drum corps. You know, the cores are so much smaller. It just feels more intimate sometimes. And from a design standpoint, it's just so different than what we see nowadays. Yeah. Not that it's better or worse. It's just it's great to see something that's different. Yeah. Probably one of the most challenging environmental situations. Oh, the hardest. This moment changed what? How's 15 it times at least. Oh, yeah. Low yeah. 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 And this, this was, was gorgeous. This was all, um, yeah, this is all composed at this point. Uh, we didn't really have a ballad per se, but we needed to use some of the music um, that would allude back to uh, Jeff Beale's production. So uh, Jim and I composed this, this right here um, all the way through the, the big moment. At this section and and we just tried to the, the whole idea was we were creating a very circular kind of a, a, a program here as you can see with the drill there's a lot of that happening it's gorgeous so, too you know. yeah it is really aesthetically pleasing. it felt totally really good yeah. to turn around and play the little brass came back in um, it was, why'd you oh, raise your eyebrows yeah. right there oh, yeah 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 we'll talk about that later and here's the master card. Everybody knows. Oh. <laughs> the S-shaped holes. Yeah, that's a good shot of the Those would be kudos. And B. Oh. The master card logo. I never thought about it like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that was the rated G version of what that was. <laughs> Yeah, again, more pathways right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this ended that whole um, composed moment. We get right into the rhythm. Mm-hmm. Nice. There's the right there. <laughs> yeah, we just lifted this off. I would never thought about calling up Richard Daniel Poor and actually asking him for a score. So <laughs> this was a complete lift. And there's some interesting harmonies that we had to work through. Yeah, Emily, like what you're talking about with the you know the rifles are on the back hash right now. Just never seen Listen, <laughs> no, we don't, right? And I mean, it, it, it was very different. I'm like, uh, I'm sorry, I've seen it. Is this, is this a back that guy? Right. It's so much fun to go watch these shows too, that, especially the ones I marched with my drill designer hat on now, you know, because when I was in the in this stuff, but it was all about the music. That's, you know, most of it. So now it's fun to have my different designer hat on watching all this. And we call those the maze pieces. The wasabi sticks. Dude, those slice of fingers. Yeah. Those were deadly. Those were deadly. <laughs> we originally were going to have those kind of markings going across all over the field. And we were going to move and change the look of the field. But that just became a logistical nightmare. So this is what we ended up with. So they are being used. I love the horns coming out and like doing battle. <laughs> yeah. We really learned how to play this song. At a standstill. <laughs> well, and this was another moment of the show where it was just Jack timing Tony. nightmare at times, just from an environmental standpoint. You know, with the horns being in a hollow box, it's one of the hardest horns you can play in, and the drum line is you know 40 yards away. Yeah, no okay. problem. So we too. did some. We did some interesting things to, to make that work. All right. This closer is just the opener part two. Yeah. <laughs> or a lot part two. Right back well, at it. 
we ended the opener and then the show never stopped after that. There was never right. a moment where I stopped conducting. Or that we took a breath. Yeah, yeah. we're just moving. Ah, uh, there's the baritone lick. A little bit darker in the palette of the slides. This is the grubbiest section I love this like, part. Yeah. You notice you don't expect it. In a lot of this happened, we just took the idea of Oroa and just turned it into what we considered a closer. Um, I mean, we used some source material, obviously, um, spent some sort of the ending, but a lot of it we just had to fabricate. Yes, this. Ooh. So right after the big halt, the drum line's behind the horn line here. I can't hear a single thing that they're doing. If you watch Dust in the Center Snare, he's just doing this, and that's the only way I'm able to keep any of this together. <laughs> the moment where we apply a time out time in the show. Yep. Hey! Back away, yeah, you <laughs> Look at how many green feathers those can do. Yeah, There's a lot of age out. Something that stood yeah. out. Yeah. All right. Here it comes. Gotta check out the symbols. And the guy outlet just off the 45. All right. Look at here comes the symbol. whole closer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, symbols. Peace. And look at our track star with Bobby Six, man. They are killing it. They need track stars. <laughs> yeah. They chase everybody. Oh, Matt man. Ramey here is my favorite. Look at him go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice. And that was our favorite point is when we got the crowd up. That was the whole point. Angela. Hey, Angela. The Santa Clara oh, Vanguard. Great job, guys. Under the direction of Rick Valenzuela. <laughs> I'm tired just watching the show. I know. <laughs> right? You know, it didn't My even, shoulder still hurts. I've, for, I've forgotten about us not stopping after after the opener. Yeah, okay, and it, it never went, stopped. Yeah, I, I mean, that's funny because I, I do remember uh, us trying to figure out that we wanted it to keep going and going. It's kind of like a precursor to the Moto Perpetuo show in a lot of ways. Um, mm -hmm. I got to ask, Stuart, the, the, the cameraman knew exactly when to pan at you, and you are smiling at somebody about something. What's going through your mind yeah, right there, yeah, my friend? Yeah, they, they did. Yeah. Spill well, it. I mean, uh, I had a girlfriend in the core, and I was dating someone in the, in the color guard. And that was the, the one moment that she got um, pretty close to the front field and right near me. Oh. Um, not near me, but, you know, in the center of the field there. So that was our little moment. And, of course, you know, when you do the same Camera thing over man, and over again, they, they right, pick that yeah. stuff up. Yeah. That was awesome. But That's it was awesome. nice. It you know, was everybody remembers the trumpet player with the wink. You know. But, oh yeah. You, know, yeah. you were you were uh -huh. way before him, Stu. Way. Well, before. and he if I could trench, wink, I probably <laughs> would have done that, but I can't <laughs> wink. So. <laughs> Truth yeah. is, we we didn't know if we were actually going to get to do this show that night. Um, we were sitting on a bus while it was raining. Well, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. I had forgotten about that. What's yeah, Orlando? We, we talked we talk before semifinals because, yeah, we were pretty much convinced that we, the semifinals was going to be finals. Oh, it's wah, tropical weather. Wah. Just it's all of a sudden, <laughs> beautiful day, and then boom, mm -hmm. yeah. here comes the storm. Easy yeah. in Orlando. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so funny that I was reminded, I was reminded by some of the uh, other guard members because, let's be real, some of it gets a little fuzzy and kind of works together. Um, and so I had kind of pulled the audience yes. and one of the, one of the fondest memories from other individuals that I totally forgot about was at one point we're in Orlando and I want to say this is either quarterfinals day or semis, but they walked us to Miss Amana. God bless yourself. We walked, I walked over to Miss Amana, Amana and um, we thought that they were giving us like popsicles or something. We thought, oh, it's finals week, something nice and special. They open up this cooler and they dip all of our equipment and gloves 
all things in ice cold water so that we could get used to spinning with completely sopping wet in preparation for <laughs> the, the idea that we would potentially be performing in the rain. And it was the most foul. <laughs> the smells were horrible. <laughs> it was so insane. And we were all so depleted after that. Wow. But it was an experience, right? And in the end, but. you know, I see those big fans in a lot of gymnasiums, uh, you know, and I don't see you guys using putting those on to practice for wind. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, <laughs> Turn on the fans. <laughs> well, Key, I love the story that um, about just the copyrights and wool chick keeler. And Orala, so I was wondering if you could share that with us. Yeah, so, um, well, of course, I was, uh, it was my rookie year as um, Brass Arranger, so I was ready to get started. Czech Keeler is from Poland, and we were like, we had no place to go, and hey, this is where you get permissions. You can just go through this company or that company. Um, we had to figure it out on our own. So, and yeah, they were, they were all fine with us using it. And, uh, you know, so I was like kind of going, okay, well, what about, you know, the payment? Uh, you know, how much do we have to pay? <laughs> and their interpretation was, is that they had to pay us. So they offered us $1 to do the <laughs> arrangement. True story. <laughs> yep. no I hope you accepted the offer. <laughs> what happened in oh. Houston? <laughs> well, what happened in Houston? <laughs> And um, now let's just put it this, I'm not in charge of the mutes. Okay. Nope. Let's get that out there right now. Okay. But uh, whoever was decided that it was the best place to store them was in a black trash bag after rehearsals. We just I kept all you, the mutes in a big trash bag. I can tell you that's a bad idea, oh. but, but continue. So you can imagine after a certain amount of time, half the season, that back black trash bag got mistaken for trash. Yes, this happened in oh. Houston, actually. In, what kind of there, there we were. Yeah. We were in Texas, and all of a sudden, like the major effect that we have with the front part of, of, of the, the Pollock, uh, the one-man one show, was completely like, okay, now we have to do this open, and what well, are we going to do? I think we, we did do? a show or two with no mutes. With right? no mutes, and we were yeah. like scrambling to find mutes, you know, along the way, and uh, I don't remember when they actually got back in the show, but... I want to know what that very first ensemble rehearsal looked like at the beginning of the show. Oh. And you guys said, all right, let's try to take the Met out. Let's take In the Met March. out. You want that, a war? That was the thing. <laughs> we, we couldn't use a Met. That we, was the thing. No, we, well, we couldn't down. use a traditional no, long ranger no, and man. a Met. And it was, it? it was, it we started not only a hundred yards apart, but backfield. Right. So make it harder and then make it harder. <laughs> and then and wait. And then Why didn't put you guys put blindfolds on? I mean, come on. Yeah. Let's and then it. put a stack. <laughs> Let's go in a so dome. So we're 160 <laughs> yards deep and 150 yards yeah. apart. <laughs> Dude, okay. Do you guys remember the first time we did a dome though? I mean, it was like a joke. It was so well, yeah, funny. Well, yeah. Pathways was still Wasn't playing four, four cores later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you're hearing that dean da 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 and you're like, wait yeah. a minute. And the craziest thing for me was if side one came in and they were solid and together, well, side two came in and they were a half beat behind, I couldn't do anything There's to fix nothing. it. There was nothing I could do to fix that because if I changed something, then relative to side one, they would be wrong. And I will never forget being in the box with Ralph and here goes the, here goes the drum corps. And he just turned and, you know, you know the, Ralph, the Ralph look where he's kind of going, like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he gives you the side eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so someone made a mistake. We, <laughs> we all got the side eye from, from Ralph, and wow. it was horrible. It was so bad. I mean, it sounded like a, a bad high school marching band <laughs> is what it sounded like. And we're just sitting, and, and it was like, you know, well, this is a decision we've made. We've got to figure it out. And so, obviously, it's it, a lot of trial and error. And when I was uh, joking before the call, uh, if that just that one decision of being 100 yards apart literally took up half the summer in terms of rehearsal time. So, just think about how much cleaner we could have been with maybe a different approach. But the coolest thing is, is that Santa Clara has started 100 yards apart with the, the split you know, the split files that way. And we did it and it came off. It, it was 
great by the end. But man, that was a tough, a tough journey getting to that point. And we we kind of just all dug into the product and, and we looked under that that big umbrella picture of pathways. And as long as everything we did pointed to that, we knew we would be successful with, with a, a really strong design. As, as any good conversation, we, this could just keep going and going, but I want to thank every one of you guys, uh, Nick, Stuart, Emily, Key, thank you so much for sharing your stories with us today and sharing your time and being so gracious with that. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining us today for another edition of the fan guard. Once again, my name's Mark. I'm John. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Smile. (laughs) <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, that was great, you guys. Good job. You're natural. Sorry. All